This video is going to be the perfect example of why Muslim apologists of today must lie to save Islam. Without lies of the Muslim apologists, Islam dies. And here is a perfect example why. Judaism uh, has these um, rooted ideas that find their fullest expression in the Christian faith. Yeah, and if you actually do some research and look at the literature on it, from, from what I'm able to tell, is that the authors will actually tell you that these things which are claiming to be rooted in Judaism were actually previously rooted in paganism and are fob off from that. So I don't think it's actually a good thing to for Christians to appeal to it because if they want, then they're seemingly endorsing paganism and uh, polytheism. All right. Do you have any specific um, uh, literature or scholars that um, you can mention that make this argument? Uh, not offhand, but I know that um, what's the uh, what's the Jewish scholar's name? Um, um, not was it Benjamin Summer? Oh! Benjamin Summer. Oh no, he did. And if you actually do some research and look at the literature on it, the authors will actually tell you that these things, which are claiming to be rooted in Judaism, were actually previously rooted in paganism. All right. Do you have any specific literature or scholars that you can mention that make this argument? Benjamin Summer. Friends, it's a delight to be here today with Professor Benjamin Summer who is professor of Bible at the Jewish Theological Seminary. Prior to that, he was a professor at Northwestern University. He is the author of Revelation and Authority, Sinai in Jewish Scripture and Tradition, a study on how the giving of the Torah at Sinai became understood in the Jewish tradition, which won the 2016 Goldstein Goren Award for the best book in Jewish thought, Mazel Tov. An earlier book of his, The Bodies of God and the World of Ancient Israel, were actually previously rooted in paganism. In fact, it's not so pagan. In fact, there was a monotheistic version of this that existed already in the Tanakh. So this is not just Greek paganism sort of smushed onto a Jewish, uh, a Jewish mold. And if you actually do some research, I don't think it's actually a good thing to, for Christians to appeal to it. In fact, to say that three is one, heck, the Kabbalah is going to go further than that. They say ten is one. <laughs> um, the Zohar, Sefer Habahir, they say ten is one. And actually, when you get to Luriana Kabbalah, and there's the idea that within each of the Sefirot, each of the ten Sefirot has ten Sefirot within it, so that we've got a hundred different Sefirot, really. We're taking this reasoning much, much farther than the Christians did. And if you actually do some research and look at the literature on it... So, actually, one of the more radical conclusions that I came to, much to my own surprise, when I was writing this book, and this is not at all what I had intended to do, because in various ways that we could discuss if you're interested, I'm actually rather uncomfortable with my own conclusion here, but as a scholar, I got to call him as I see him. Um, one of the conclusions that I came to, to my shock when I finished this book, is that we Jews have no theological objection to the doctrine of the Trinity. Benjamin Summer. We Jews for centuries have objected to the Trinity, have labeled it pagan, have said, well, that's clear. There you can see that the core of Christianity doesn't come out of the, the, the Hebrew Bible, the Tanakh, what they call the Old Testament. Really, they're being disloyal to the monotheism of the Old Testament. Actually, I think that that's not true. To my surprise, I came to the conclusion, somewhat to my dismay, I came to the conclusion that we Jews have no theological right to object to the Trinity. From what I'm able to tell. Theologically, I think that the model of the Trinity is an old ancient Near Eastern idea that shows up in the Tanakh, in the Tanakh, in the Tanakh, in the Tanakh, and that in a different way shows up in Jewish mysticism as well. Benjamin Summer. Now, do you understand why we always say without lies, Islam dies? Do you see how Muslim apologists need to lie? Need to lie about people, force words inside the mouth of people, which they did not say to save the Ummah? Jake Brancatella, i.e. the Muslim metaphysician, you are busted and served for everybody to see. You have no honor and you have no shame.